guys welcome back to my channel marina here and as always i'm excited to welcome you to another video if it's your first time here welcome to have you here OGs, welcome always so nice to have you guys here so two weeks ago i brought out a video where i was talking about mistakes that guests in canada would typically make and how these mistakes can set you back you guys I did not envisage the feedback <laughs> that came out from that video. I got a lot of feedback, both publicly and privately. People just sharing their own experiences and yo, yo, people have had stories. Like there were some mild ones, some of them bothered around marriages that almost broke up because of things that their guests did. I really hope that people are learning from these videos because i'm not just here to entertain you guys i'm talking about actual realities that can set you back that have serious consequences i really hope that when you watch these videos you're trying to see what you can do differently and how you can implement some of the things that i talk about in this video so that everybody's life is easier thank you for all of you who shared experiences experiences with me i really appreciate that in the name of balance because that's all we're all about on this channel when we talk about one side we'll talk about the other side so today my focus is on the host the stories that we have heard about the things that our hosts get up to is what we are going to be addressing in today's video you guys disclaimer i am only a messenger take the message and spread the messenger if you see me on the road please still say hi okay <laughs> these conversations have to be had we have to say it i rely a lot on information that i get that gets sent to me personally and then instagram pages where they talk about settlements where they talk about people who are moving to other countries and their integration process so i i rely a lot on some of those pages for the information that i get and then from my own personal research so all of what i'm going to be sharing today is on the basis of feedback that has come to me personally and other people's experiences that i've read online okay now the first thing that stands out to me when i think about horrible host experiences like people who have experienced hosts from hell one very common one that happened among many people was where a guest lands in this new country the host promises them i'm going to be at the airport to pick you up and by the time the person lands the phone number is out of reach the phone number is switched off the host cannot be reached it was mind-boggling for me the number of people who had experiences like that where they get promised i mean i'll pick you up you have a place to stay today and then when the person lands the host is not not reachable completely unreachable and and i'm trying to imagine like can you imagine landing in a new country like if you have a family you have children depending on the time of the year it could be cold you could be landing in the night you could be landing at awkward hours and then the person who's supposed to pick you up does not show up do you know how disruptive that can be do you know how unsettling that is a number of people had to sleep in the airports because their hosts were not answering their phones their hosts were phones were switched off like why why exactly like if you're a host and you have been in that situation before what really happened like what happened to your battery was there no light what exactly happened why would you promise somebody that you will pick them up from the airport and then your phone is switched off what exactly help me understand it those experiences were bad like there was one particular couple who said they spent 14 hours at the airport waiting to even be able to reach their host don't forget that when people land more than half the time they do not already have a local um, phone number for the countries that they are in so they rely on airport wi-fi to be able to make internet calls over like whatsapp or facebook or instagram that's the only way these people can reach you and that's the only way you can reach them if you are a host and you do that help us understand i want to give people the benefit of the doubt that that cannot be intentional like them there has to be something that has happened in the case of this couple the person said they slept off and their phone was dead they did not notice like you play with somebody's life like that what type of sleep even adam did not sleep like that when they removed his rib and made woman <laughs> why why what kind of sleep <laughs> you know i'm laughing about it but it was very it was a very sad and painful situation when i read it so if you have been in that situation before can you help us understand what happened like what did they make from the rib they removed because they have to have created something for you to sleep that deeply that somebody's life is going to be on hold for 14 hours you were sleeping for 14 hours okay the second host experience that i think is just a wicked thing to do that some people seem to have had experiences with are people who get directed to homeless shelters to go and find accommodation as mind-boggling as this sounds it is actually true 
I have heard a similar situation like that that happened in Saskatoon. Somebody landed and the host said, ah, no, I know a place where you can go and get free accommodation. They sent the person the address. And by the time the person got picked up, they put the address into Google Map. The address was looking one kind because the neighborhood was like, this place is not residential. There are no hotels around here. Where exactly are you going? Only for them to get to the location that the person provided. And it was a homeless shelter. Homeless shelter for a newcomer to go and land in. Now, there are people who are genuinely homeless who have to depend on those shelters to survive. But for somebody who's new, who doesn't understand the terrain, you now direct the person to a homeless shelter where they don't even understand the system. Do you know how dangerous that is? Some of those places experience a lot of unrest because of the kind of people that end up in um, places like that. Now, this is not discriminating against anybody who has had to depend on a homeless shelter, but I'm talking about it from the angle where you send somebody who's unsuspecting. You don't tell them where you're directing them to. You just tell them, oh, go there, you'll get free accommodation. Why do you not provide adequate information up front to say this is exactly where i'm sending you and this is what happens there why do you not provide that information up front so people come they're unsuspecting they think that they are going somewhere where somebody is on the other side waiting to receive them and help them with that transition only to realize that it is homeless shelters that they have been directed to that's not fair guys really it's a very serious thing to disrupt somebody's life like that because people could get robbed they could get robbed of all the money that they bring they could get robbed of their belongings how is that person supposed to start their life in a new country like that with that kind of disruptive and unsettling experience it's not fair guys we need to stop it i'm just going to be talking to hosts to all of us who have been here who have established some kind of balance with our lives in this country i'm just going to be sharing with you guys some things that i think we can do differently when it comes to how we accommodate newcomers when it comes to how we can be helpful and be more useful to the people who are new and depend on us for direction the first thing that i think all of us need to pay attention to is kindness we all really guys you, you we need to be kind it's not just because kindness is a no-brainer like it's common sense for for you to be kind to people who you are providing that kind of help for being a newcomer in a new country is very very disruptive it's such a major move like all of us look at it from the angle of oh we're excited to move to canada you don't realize that you have made such a major change to uproot your life from one country where you had like a rhythm you had everything settled and going to uproot your life and then bring it to this new country to start again it's a major move and the person who has made this move could use all of the kindness kindness that they can find they need kindness when it comes to providing them direction just being able to say you know what don't worry about this we'll sort this out tomorrow provide reassurance because they are going to wake up the next day after they land say they land or you have given them accommodation for that night the next day newcomers are typically dazed it's a combination of anxiety it's a combination of confusion for some people they begin to question their choices is this the right move do we know what to do so there are a lot of unsettled emotions that that person is carrying around you need to be kind we need to be kind be a little kinder to newcomers that's not the time to turn your house to military barracks where people cannot laugh where people cannot be free where people cannot just just be able to relax and worry less about the things that are in front of them let your environment be welcoming let your home be welcoming let it be warm don't be hostile to newcomers don't be hostile to them and this part the newcomers who you are hosting the people who are staying in your house for that temporary period while they're sorting themselves out newsflash they are not your maids they are not your drivers i know that the last time i encouraged newcomers to offer i encourage guests to offer to help around the house create some value to take responsibility of you but that is going to be an ad added advantage if it happens please do not then begin to depend on the people who you are hosting for that period to do all your chores they are not the ones who are now responsible for driving your children to basketball practice if they offer that's a different thing entirely but for you to now make that their responsibility because they are in your house you will send them to the store one particular person say they woke him up at 10 30 pm to go and buy butter <laughs> why if that person was not there would you not have bought the butter how would you have done it so let's just be kinder let's just be a little more gracious in how we're treating people they are not your mates they are not your drivers they are not the ones that now become your babysitters when you want to go out you leave your babies and 
and two other children for them to take care of because you have gotten free childcare. No, that's not what it's supposed to be. If the person offers, yes, be, be grateful for it, but don't now make it an expectation that because this person is staying in your house, they are the ones who will do all the chores, they are the ones who will take your children around, they will do grocery shopping and all of those things because for you, you are found free help. No, that's not what it is. So please, let's all just be kind and be a little warmer in the way we accommodate people in our homes. The second thing that I wanted to point out is we need to stop making our guests pay for everything in our house. Again, I'm, I'm putting it side by side with the advice that I've given the guest. I told the guest that they should offer. I told them that they should insist if need be, especially if you see that the family you're dealing with is struggling, offer, put, insist that you want to put things out there. While I am asking them to offer, I am also asking you to please be realistic in your expectations of them. The person who you are hosting for two weeks or for a week is not automatically responsible for your mortgage. That person is not automatically responsible for paying your utilities. If they open the tap, you charge them. If they use your washing machine, you charge them. If they use the dryer, you charge them. Like why? Now, this is some people's reality. There was one particular guy when he shared the story, shared the size of the house. It turned out that the money that they charged him was going to cover the mortgage of that family for the whole month. And this person spent eight days in the person's house. How is that fair? That is wicked. The fact that somebody spent eight days in your house does not mean that you build them for water, build them for power, build them for everything that it comes to the point where if they put all the amounts the person paid together, it can pay your mortgage. That is wicked. It is wicked. We need to adjust that responsibility. If you know that you cannot afford to house these people for free, maybe it should be an upfront conversation to say, hey, I know that you're coming with your spouse and you're coming with two children. It's going to be um, a strain financially for us to be able to accommodate you. So why don't we agree on a fixed amount that you can contribute just to reduce the strain or reduce the pressure that these additional expenses will put on our budget. Agree upfront. Bring the conversations um, ahead of time talk about it, agree on it. Instead of waiting for the person to come and then at the end you now say, okay, just let's now gather everything that you have spent. This is what you owe me. That's not fair. And then this other part I'd like to add is that as a host, there is responsibility on you to offer some help, some kind of direction. They are going to depend on you as their first resource to get around, to get recommendations on what they should do. That's not the time for you to now provide recommendations from the standpoint of what you like and not what makes sense for them. Two different things. So for instance, you have been here three years, you've been here, whatever, you've bought your home, you're living in a nice neighborhood. These people are looking for where to rent a house. Let your default not be to look for them, look for a house for them on your street. Don't forget that the fact that you can live in that house now does not mean that that's where you started from. So don't insist that, oh, they must rent your street or they must rent your own basement. It has cost fight for some people. Like, oh, my basement is free. The people did not want to live in a basement. It now became a reason why that relationship was strained. They don't have to rent your basement. They don't. They do not. Yes, while people are grateful that you have provided that initial support for them, let them take on their own journeys. They don't have to do everything you want them to do. Make your own mistakes. Live where you live. Buy the kind of car that you drive. The pressure is a lot. It is a lot. Let people make their own choices, provide them recommendations, but leave the final decision up to them to decide what they want to do. They don't have to rent the homes that you want them to rent. They don't have to rent the business of your friends. They don't have to live in the apartment where your friend is the facility manager because you are looking for commission for your friend. There are too many stories, too many. Don't sabotage their choices when they don't pick what you want them to pick. And then that brings me to this debate that has been going on forever in Saskatoon. This East versus West. The East is safe, the West is unsafe. Like I hear those things, I just laugh. Because it is not fair. It is really not fair, especially to newcomers when you tell them that, ah, no, don't rent houses in the West because the West is unsafe. I agree that there are particular areas in the West where there's a lot of unrest because there are a lot of gang on gang crimes. So there's unrest, there's heavy police presence in those places, which might not be ideal, especially if you have a family, you have young kids. That's not what you want them to see every day. But can you be specific when you tell people that, oh, don't rent the house in the West, can you tell them what part of the West they should not be renting their homes in? Can you tell them the parts that are unsafe? It's Instead of just say the west is unsafe some parts of the west are cheaper than some parts of the east 
If the person can only afford so much, why don't you give them all the options? Or tell them the truth to say, okay, this area is unsafe, but this other area is fine. Instead of just saying, don't go to the West, because you want them to live near you. For, the, for this particular couple, their host discouraged them from renting anywhere else except their neighborhood because they were looking for free childcare for their children. The couple wanted to be able to drop their kids off in the homes of these guests when they want to do other things. So they tried to keep the guests as close to their homes as possible. That's a very selfish thing to do. At the end of the day, this couple ended up renting a house that was way above their budget. It became a lot of pressure because they could not find jobs immediately. They literally were gathering money to pay rent because the house was too expensive for them because of somebody's selfish interest. Guys, let's stop doing that, okay? Provide resources, provide the help, but let them make their own choices. Let them breathe. Let them breathe. But bottom line, that's what I'm saying. The last but not the least, guys, we need to start to keep it real. Host, listen to me. Keep it real. That fake lifestyle that we have been portraying on social media to make yourself look like you are what you are not, you are going to need to stop it. You are going to need to stop it. Because sometimes this thing puts a lot of pressure on newcomers to make choices that they cannot sustain. If you know that that's your new car, you did not pay for it, it's, you are leasing the car or you are financing the car and you are paying for it on a monthly basis, tell people up front. If you know that that designer item that you have, you bought it using your credit card and you do not, you have not actually paid for it, tell them up front. Instead of painting this picture of your life is rosy, when you know that that life is being funded by credit, say the truth. Tell them the truth. Paint realistic pictures. If you know that you have bought clothes from fairly used stores, don't now come and raise your nose when somebody tells you, oh, I'm considering going to buy clothes from a fairly used store. Do not do that. When these people tell you that they are looking for where to buy furniture, don't take them to the most expensive stores because to you, that is your lifestyle. The lifestyle of the rich and famous. Except that it is on credit, on Bessie. Let us call it what it is. Tell them the truth. If you have options, give them all of the options to say, okay, if you're looking for brand new, this is where to go. If you're looking for gently used, this is where to go. If you're looking for free stuff, this is where to go. Give them all of the resources. Instead of painting this picture of you are high and mighty, when you and I know that the real things are getting paid for by credit. Tell them the truth. If you have been on this channel for a while, you guys know that I've been very vocal about the choices that I had to make when I first landed in Canada. For like the first two years, I, was, I did not buy anything brand new for the first two years. And in that first two years, we bought our first home. So every, I had a goal and my eyes was on the goal. I knew what I had to forego to make sure that that goal came to pass. But I had the right advice. I had the right people painting realistic pictures to me. And that's what helped that decision. So all of us, please, let's just stop this. This um, lifestyle of the high and mighty, when you know that if not for credit card, you cannot afford half of the things that you have. Say the truth. Tell them the truth, okay? Anyway, thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk. I just thought that it was necessary for us to put this conversation on the table because the reports that we've been getting are not good at all. If you're willing to share more of your personal experiences, you already know what to do. You can do that in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned from it. If you did, please share it. Share it to as many people as you think will, be, will benefit from this information. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And until I come your way in my next video, hopefully without the Koboko. <laughs> Until I come your way in the next one, it's your girl as always, Marina, saying thank you and have an awesome day. Bye, guys. Peace, y'all.